Okay, so now that the microcontroller is able to read in the data and it's able to give us a true degree Celsius number uh, that we can work with, what do we do with that? We have to find out, you know, what value do we want to start the pulse width modulation and when do we want to consider ourselves on full blast and doing some extreme cooling. I did some research on the internet and I found some interesting results. So when I was looking for the optimal hard drive temperatures, I found this Google report that was quite interesting. And they gave a nice little chart here of average temperatures over many years. And uh, based on this chart, what I've de determined uh, that I'm going to be using is basically um, these second and third from the bottom areas. So uh, basically 35 to 45 degrees Celsius. Uh, in the three month term, they do very well. The six month term, they do very well. One year, two year, they do extremely well. On the third year, there's an, there's an odd little spike here. Um, I'm not sure if that's maybe just uh, some sort of anomaly with a bunch of bad drives that year or something, but I'm quite confident that the 35 to 45 degree area is going to work quite well for me. And this is basically how I've determined I'm going to uh, be breaking things down here. So temperature in degrees Celsius on, le on the left here, uh, fan power, uh, which is pulse width modulation value on the right. Um, if it's 35 degrees, the fan is going to be off. 36, 37, and 38, the fan is going to be running at 30% uh, pulse width modulation, so a 30% duty cycle. And I've, I've decided not to go 10 and 20% and 30%. Uh, 10 and 20 because oftentimes a fan, if you pulse width modulate it too low, it actually doesn't turn on, it just sort of buzzes. So my minimum is going to be 30%. And then from then on, each degree is going to give me 10% additional. Um, right up to 45 degrees, the fan will be running full blast. And of course, anything beyond then, the fan will continue to run at 100%. Okay, and here's a, a quick overview of the circuit that we're going to be using here. Uh, Thankfully, we're going to be using a hard drive power connector, so we are already have 12 volt and 5 volt. Uh, yellow is 12 volt, red is 5 volt. Uh, 12 volt for the fan, 5 volts for everything else. Here's the PIC microcontroller and the three lines that are going to be uh, coming off of there. So we have uh, pin number 5 is going to be going through a current limiting resistor, lighting a blue LED. Uh, pin number 3 that's going to be the input from our LM35 temperature sensor. And then pin number two is going to be going, um, is going to be powering up the motor through a transistor here. Okay, and here is our final circuit. Uh, we've removed the meter leads because we've sort of trued out and we trust what our uh, temperature sensor is being converted at. We've added the transistor, which is basically uh, going to be driving our fan motor. We have installed our blue LED with the current limiting resistor here. And I'll just walk you through the additional uh, wires and circuit here. So this is, uh, again, ground at the top here. And this is a uh, NPN transistor, which is emitter base collector. So the emitter is going directly to ground. Base is connected to this resistor and this resistor is going to pin number um, let's see here 2 which is this blue wire and the collector which is this green wire is coming over and this is actually negative of our fan. Positive of the fan goes directly in this case here it goes directly to 5 volts for our test circuit um, in the real circuit, this line will go directly to 12 volts. Okay, and our LED is very simple. Uh, the cathode is going directly to ground. So this is the cathode line coming over. And the anode goes through a current limiting resistor. And then this line goes directly to uh, pin 5, right here. Okay, I actually just did a test a second ago, and uh, in the circuit, you'll see there's uh, a small little uh, bypass cap there, a 0.1 microfarad uh, capacitor. I forgot to put it in. Uh, here it is here. It just basically goes uh, very close to the chip, 
uh, right across positive and negative and uh, especially here since off the same 5 volt supply I'm actually running a fan what I found when I was just doing a little bit of testing here is uh, once the fan was being modulated at about 40% it started actually uh, occasionally resetting the, the controller so it was probably I didn't meter it but it was probably throwing lots and lots of junk back onto the uh, uh, power supply there so that capacitors in and it looks like everything's running nice and smooth now okay so let's take a look at this new circuit in action we still have the serial connector uh, enabled and I've added one extra item here okay so now in addition I'll just lock the camera down here now in addition to uh, the actual raw number that we're getting uh, this is the analog to digital value this is the digital value we have the calculated temperature 27 degrees right now and we have the uh, the new value which is the fan pulse width modulation value so basically this is a, a value from 0 to 100 it'll actually go over 100 but uh, uh, basically anything over 100 um, is the same thing as 100 and uh, we can actually introduce some hot water I'm just grabbing some hot water here in a syringe okay so here's my syringe full of hot water I'm gonna squirt it into the cup and we'll see what that does. And again, so we're at 31 degrees, and again, we shouldn't do anything until 36 degrees. So there's 35 degrees. Okay, 36 degrees. And we're on at 30%. 39 degrees. We're on at 40%. 50%. 60% at 41 degrees and we're ramping there's 70 degrees or 70% 70 at 42 degrees and the temperature is still going up I'll squirt some more water in there it looks like we're slowing down a bit okay 44 degrees 90% there we go 45 degrees and there you can see you know squirt some more in there let's get it over 100% so 46 is 110 so it'll just keep counting uh, every degree is uh, is another 10% um, the algorithm that uh, that does the pulse with modulation it doesn't care anything over over 100% is just 100% so um, it just basically ignores that uh, that extra value so I didn't bother taking it out so there we go. I'll uh, I'll remove the print lines here because they actually slow slow things down a little bit, and I'll uh, show you what the circuit does. Okay, so in the previous testing, I actually wasn't getting a lot of uh, fan speed here because it's it's really a 12 volt fan, and running it at 5 volts max, it was it was working okay, but not not great. Uh, so what I did is I actually uh, I actually brought over a 12 volt line here. So this is 12 volts. Um, same common negative as a 5 volt supply so the uh, negative of the fan is still going to the transistor which is going to pull it down to this ground but now positive which is a hard positive it's always connected to positive is now 12 volts here so when this fan turns on at full blast it will be getting a full 12 volt uh, it's you know it's normal power so let's give this a try Where's my syringe? Okay, I'm back. I found my syringe. Let's pump in some hot water here. And the other thing I should mention is uh, when it initially just turns on, it gets a, a one second blast of full power uh, just to make sure that the fan actually starts up. Okay, so that's lots of hot water. I'm going to dim the light so we can actually see that LED start. So this LED will start pulsing as this fan turns on. Okay, so the fan's running, the LED's on. And it's slowly ramping up. I don't know if you can see, this is also being pulsed with modulated. I'm not sure how, how good that will turn up on the camera. Okay, and this fan is roaring away. Now 
And I think we're running at 100% uh, now. I'm going to dump the water out and we'll let it naturally cool down. And we should see it ramp off slowly. There we go. You can hear it and you can also see it slowly ramping down. Okay, we're very slow now. It's probably 30% now, I would say. And 30% lasts a while because it has to drop 3 degrees until it turns off out of the 30%. And we're off. So it looks like it's a success. For more information, please go to alanparek.com.